MKBHD has done some of the best reviews of anything tech and even some non-tech over the last decade. He looks at all the aspects of the product and covers it all in detail, rolling it all into the review. His recent look at Apple intelligence seemed in line with so many other reviewers. I agree with pretty much everything he said, and yet he's completely wrong. Yes, the writing tools are weak at best. The image playground is goofy. I will probably use Genmoji as much as I use regular emojis. Almost never. Notification summaries aren't that useful. ChatGPT integration is mostly a, so what? But Apple Intelligence is one of the most important and impactful releases from the company in ages. It has the potential of changing the world of what our devices can do empowering the user to take advantage of more of the power inside those devices in a way they've never been able to do so far, regardless of where they are in the world, regardless of the infrastructure they have access to. Now, I'm not an expert in Apple intelligence. I'm not a high powered YouTube tech reviewer either. I was in the founding team of Olama, a tool for running artificial intelligence models on whatever hardware you own. And I have this channel where I talk about making AI accessible, to everyone using Olama and other tools. And that is the perspective I am bringing to this video. Apple intelligence is an iceberg. The end user features the company has released are the top of the iceberg, the things we can see. Even the additional features that come out in a few months are part of that visible tip. But beneath the surface hidden from view is a vast and powerful system that's going to reshape how we interact with our devices. Below the surface is everything the community of developers will build with it in the future. You can go back to the early days of Apple and look at every release. They have almost never delivered the best end user software. There are a few exceptions to that, of course, such as Logic Pro and Final Cut Pro, which are easily among the best in their category. But to an outsider like me, it feels like Apple tells its employees to, to hold back and not do everything they can do to deliver the best overall end user experience. Instead, it should deliver the best platform that the community of developers can build on. Those developers are Apple's partners that help pull through potential customers of its hardware. Apple should create sample apps that inspire the community to build something better pages, mail, notes, voice memos, photos, and more. These are all apps that deliver on some ideas, but are intentionally held back from their full potential, opening up the way to external developers to build something more. Sure, it's gonna Sherlock the simple base functionality, but it always leaves the upper end open for third-party developers that make the platform what it is. Now, in the early days, Apple was the platform for creatives, not because of any applications they made, but for the base functionality only Apple could deliver. Font rendering, displays, and, and so much more. One could say I'm also in the early days of this channel. If you're enjoying this video so far, then you can help me do more by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Apple's early days have long since passed, and now they have a line of chips that are some of the strongest available. For artificial intelligence apps, Apple Silicon offers better efficiency and a better price performance ratio than any other platform out there by many multiples. We've seen plenty of reviews that look at various types of hardware from both sides and the Apple hardware uses power more efficiently. As the world needs more power to run all their appliances and devices, Having a platform that uses less energy while being able to do everything they need to do is so important. But at that high end, the end that just wants the fastest model at any cost, Nvidia had a wide lead with cards like the 4090 and the A100. A 4090 could run an artificial intelligence large language model twice as fast as my M1 Max MacBook Pro. Each generation of Apple Silicon has incrementally increased that performance. But the M4 Max has just about caught up and we haven't yet seen 
the M4 Ultra. And every generation of Apple Silicon can achieve their maximum performance, consuming far less power than even the smallest GPUs from AMD and Nvidia. The problem up until Apple Intelligence is that a lot of the primitives had to be built by third-party developers and some portions of Apple Silicon were inaccessible to anyone outside of Apple. Olama and Llama CPP and others have built those primitives and are doing amazing things with them. But if Apple provides more of the basics, then more developers can focus on building truly innovative applications on top of that foundation. If you look at the comments for the MKBHD video, a lot of folks will compare the end user apps of Apple Intelligence to Gemini and other online services, suggesting that Apple Intelligence is a failure compared to a service that runs on hundreds of thousands of high-end power-hungry servers with equally demanding GPUs. They are completely missing the point just as much as Marquez is. This is not a one-to-one -one comparison. A powerful on-device AI that can use your own data without the privacy and security breaches that we have already seen with OpenAI and Google is something completely different. And one that can work without an internet connection is super powerful, especially considering how power efficient the hardware is. Yes, there have been attempts to run models on devices before, but they are super power hungry, worse than even the most greedy apps we've ever used. As with any new technology area, the initial apps tend to be goofy toys compared to what a creative developer will think of later in the future. Sure, there are going to be some curmudgeons who will bury their head in the sand and pretend AI has no positive benefit. They'll cling to their outdated notions of how technology should work, scoffing at the potential of on-device AI, keeping those advancements out of their own products. But for those willing to look beyond the surface, Apple intelligence is one component of a much larger paradigm shift. The one mistake Apple has made with this release, and it's a pretty silly one, is highlighting the end user features. It's no wonder that folks think that's all Apple intelligence is. Calling it Apple intelligence certainly didn't help, overloading the acronym of artificial intelligence. As WWDC has become more of a general consumer event, it makes sense that the developer experience is downplayed. Thankfully, however, behind the scenes, there are plenty of Apple staff building out that developer experience, making the tools and documentation available. They still have a lot of work to do to make more of the primitives available. But what has been done so far is incredibly exciting. Seeing what artificial intelligence developers can do on the Apple Silicon platform so far is inspiring. Olama and so many others have done amazing things, and that's without the benefits that Apple intelligence brings. I can't wait to see the improvements and enhancements well-designed artificial intelligence based features will bring to my writing, to my images, to my videos, and to my life. They won't replace me, but make me and everyone else better at everything they do. Yeah, this video is a little different from anything I've posted before. It's not my typical tutorial or review. I hope you found it interesting and I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.